family, it's the Mobile Home Diva, and in today's video, I thought it was time for story time. I've been trying to make this video for a minute, but something was always going on. You know, the last couple of days with it being Christmas and New Year's and all of that, things have been really hectic and stuff, having to work and fill in for people who are not working and entertaining guests at our house and just been a lot going on and I haven't been able to carve out any time but I really wanted to share with you the real reason it took so long for us to close so let's start from the beginning toward the end of January my husband and I my husband and I started looking at houses in January uh, at property in January and um, we finally settled on a location that we liked in Locust Grove. So we put in an offer and we thought things were going to go pretty quickly because we our offer um, was the property was twenty thousand dollars. The offer was for seventeen. The seller countered with $18,880. Odd number, I know. But instead of going back and forth, because I really wanted to say $18,000, instead of going back and forth, we went ahead and said, okay. So, um, in the offer, he wanted to close in 45 days. But the lender who, who was going to fund the money wanted to close in 60 days and he agreed. So the process started, everything was on track. They were pretty swift. They got the inspector out or the surveyor of the pro for the, to survey the property and make sure it was worth what they were asking for out within a couple of days. They got all of our paperwork. The um, seller of the mobile home was getting all of their stuff together. Things were moving pretty quickly. And as we neared um, the end of the 60 days, we were on track to go ahead and close. Out of the blue one day, and I really thought this email was going to be letting us know what it, the exact date that we were closing. Out of the blue one day, we got an email from Cascade Loans asking us to give them a call. So, her email, and I'll have to go back and find it, uh, but her email was something to the point of the seller has a lien on the property or there is a lien on the seller's property and it looks like we won't be closing. We'll do everything we can to get you closed as soon as possible. But we didn't know what that meant. The email was very vague. So I gave them a call. That's what happened. The email told us but we didn't know what it meant. So I gave them a call. So our the lender that we were de was dealing with, her name was Nicole. She was very nice. She explained that there was a lien on the property and that in order for us to be able to purchase the house, the seller would have to pay his debt or make arrangements. The lien was through the IRS. So evidently, property taxes weren't being paid. My guess is that this property was, he inherited the property um, because there was a single wide mobile home on this property 15 years prior to us purchasing it. It'd been a long time. Since anyone had lived on the property, right? So my guess is there was a single wide mobile home on the property. Maybe his mother or 
some family member and when they passed away, the property became his. Well, the property taxes had not been paid and the property taxes were over $20,000. The seller was in a rush to close and it made sense why he was in a rush to close. We figured he was trying to close before the IRS got wind of him selling the property. I asked questions about this and you know, let's just stop right there. If we had a purchase that home, that land and closed before the IRS caught up with him, would we have been responsible? I really think that we would have been responsible for the taxes that wouldn't have been paid. But it didn't happen like that. So that's neither here nor there. However, I am so happy that they were very thorough. Um, the attorneys in the attorney the attorneys, the attorney's office who was going to handle the closing, their team found out about the lien. They were very thorough. It wasn't the lender, it wasn't the realtor, it was the attorney that they were using to do the closing that did the research and found out about the lien. So anyway, back to the story. So, so we had a lien. In order for us to move forward, that had to be resolved. He had to work it out with the IRS. Well, we thought we were gonna lose the property. We, we were asking, well, why are we still in the contract? Can we just find another property? So basically, we were still in the contract and we very well could have backed out because he um, did not come through with his side of the deal. He didn't disclose the lien, etc. But the lender, the Cascade Homes lender, you know, she felt confident that it would be resolved because he had informed the attorneys that he was getting a tax attorney to correct the problem. So they asked us to just be patient. It may take an extra week or so. So we tried to be patient, but of course not knowing, not having gone through this process before, not understanding what happened, we were wanting to just come out of the deal and find another property that didn't have a lien on it. We wanted to just bounce. So my husband told me to start looking for properties and we actually did find a property. Now the property that we purchased was a little less than half an acre for 18,000. I found two or three acres in Griffin, Georgia, which is where my husband's from, in Griffin, Georgia, for $7,000. And my husband was like so excited to have that much property, to be in Griffin, where he was from, that he said, okay, let's look into that property. We actually rolled by the property, really nice piece of property. But the investigator and me, uh, did a little digging into the property and we decided that it wasn't going to be worth it and here's why number one talking to the realtor who was over that property they um the person that was selling that property had three or four other properties apparently they divided it into lots and two or three of the other lots had already sold and they had to put in just a regular septic tank would have probably cost us anywhere between two and five thousand well out of the deal two to five thousand and then it was twenty five hundred to connect to the water system 
So when you look at it like that, then altogether the property was still cheaper, it was like twelve or thirteen thousand dollars. Okay. Well, he calls me back and he says that there was a soil test already done on the property, and the soil. And I'm probably not saying this right, but there was something wrong with the soil. In parts of the property, it was really rocky. In other parts, it just wasn't good soil. So because of that, you had to have a special septic tank. This type of septic tank could cost upwards of twenty dollars or $30,000. Not to mention, you would have had to replace the soil in the area that you were putting the home um, to be able to put that septic tank in. So if I still have the emails with what it looks like, I'll be sure to put that here on the screen. But anyway, oh, also in the county, it would have been Spalding County. In Spalding County, there are restrictions to purchasing a mobile home. First of all, you have to have at least two acres of land. The house has to be a specific square foot or more. And basically you can't put a single wide on the property. Um, and you have to be mindful that the double wide meets the square footage requirements. And then you have to go before some board to request permission to put a mobile home on the property and they have to approve it. And I think it was a fee of like $500 um, to get the permit once you got approval. So it was a it was just a lot. It was a lot to get in that property. So seven thousand was a good deal if it was just seven thousand get a septic tank and you can move in. I don't even know how much it would have cost to, to get electrical put out there because number one, this property is, was really in the country. All the lots out there or two or three thousand dollars but anyway that's a whole different story back to the IRS situation so you know we determined that maybe a week before we found out that it was going to come through but it was just really grueling y'all it was grueling to I have come to a stop on highway 75 it was really grueling to just have to sit and wait and not know what was going to happen are we going to do all of this go through all of this and still not get the property. Um, what was going to happen? Was it going to fall through? We were upset at the seller for not divulging that information. We felt manipulated. We felt deception. You know, we felt that we had been lied to. Um, it was just a lot of emotions going through that. And then thinking that we were going to close... 60 days later or 60 days later and then come to find out that it's not going to happen or i think they agreed on he wanted a 30 day and they agreed on 45 or something i don't i, I think it was 45 because we did close in 60 days so i think it was 45 I, I probably said that wrong so the the seller wanted to close in 30 days and the lender said we need at least 45. That's that's what happened. So it took about two weeks. It was a lot of back and forth. She, I had so many questions every day that she put me on the emails with their attorney so I could see the updates. Um, they updated us when they confirmed that he had an attorney. And then about a week later, they updated on the email that the IRS attorneys were in a um, the tax attorneys were in negotiations with the IRS and they found out that as a part of the stipulation for the deal um, that our attorneys would have to agree to be responsible for sending them our payment on the on the for the our payment for the property directly to the IRS, which they had no problem with. So when the lender cut the $8,880 check to them, they the to the attorney in the well, they cut a check for the whole amount, the house and the land. 
and the attorney was responsible for sending the $18,880 directly to the IRS. They had no problem with it. So two, two weeks after we were supposed to close, we did end up closing. But when I tell you that that two weeks was longer than the 45 days, because in the 45 days time, things were moving, we were being updated. We knew that at the end of those 45 days, we were gonna close and get started on our house. This um, through um, this issue caused a lot of anxiety and stress. We had no idea this would even happen. Um, we had a lot of questions like why would he even try to sell the property knowing that he had a lien if he wasn't trying to just take the money and run. So, um, yeah, that was it. That's what happened. I'm sharing this with you because things can happen throughout the process. We could have very well went through that entire process and still not gotten that land and had to start over. From what I understand, it happens. You know, and we had no idea that that was one of the things that could have happened. So buyers um, know that your team of people that's working to help get you into that house have to be thorough. And I'm pretty sure it's standard to do that, but that's a question that you can ask, right? Can you make sure that there are no liens on the property? I really feel like, and I don't remember exactly, but I really feel like if we had purchased that home and that lien had not have been paid, it would have been the responsibility of the owner when it did catch up. And that would have been us. And if that had happened, it would have been very upsetting. It would have been very upsetting. So, so yeah, that's our story, you guys. That's why we didn't close in 45 days. It took a little longer. Um, and I really honestly haven't heard any other stories from people about this happening. So maybe this is a one-off situation that doesn't happen so much, but it does happen. And so I wanted to share that with you and just let you know that all was well in the end, but you know, that's something that could possibly happen. Just make sure your team is thorough. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my story. I hope that if somebody's going through this right now, that it encourages you not to be so anxious. It encourages you to allow the um, attorneys to do their due diligence um, in pursuing the right course to take to get your the property that you want. And it also helps anyone that doesn't have a team that's working for their benefit to know what I have been through. So if you have any questions about it, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And thanks so much for listening to my story time. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.